Okay, this is our ocean acidification demo. Uh, this is just regular tap water. And into the tap water, we're gonna put some, what's known as universal indicator. And universal indicator, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, there's a pH scale for it. Uh, universal indicator in a neutral solution is a green color. If you look to add it to the water, you can see the green that we get there. Let me mix it up a little bit with my stir plate. Mix through there. Okay, so now we've got our, our neutral solution. Okay, and what we're going to do is add dry ice to this solution of water and universal indicator. And dry ice, if you didn't know, is solid carbon dioxide, CO2. It's in the frozen phase. Uh, it's in the solid phase, it's frozen. And we're going to add a chunk of that here. This is dry ice. It's really cold, so I'm not going to hold it very long. And we're gonna put it in there and see what happens. So you'll notice the color changing. It's going kind of a yellow color, which is about a three on the pH scale. We're getting a definite color change as that CO2 releases its gases into the water. The water is getting carbonated, so to speak. Now, as CO2 goes into the water, as you see here in this first equation, we end up with something known as H2CO3. Um, that is known as carbonic acid. And you can see the color now is getting into the light orangey, almost dark orange color. So CO2 plus water makes an acid, carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is found in soft drinks like sodas, sparkling waters, things like that. And it gives it that slightly sour aftertaste. Remember that acids taste sour and that's why the soda has that aftertaste. Now, if the soda, uh, if that reaction goes in reverse, which it will in a bottle that's open, the carbonic acid becomes CO2 again and the CO2 leaves the soda solution. Uh, we have a common name for that process and we, we call it going flat loses its sourness and it's just sweet uh, because of the sugar that's still in there. I'm gonna add a bigger chunk of dry ice and see if we can get this to go a little faster. You can see now it's a darker orange with a pH of about one. We went from a seven to about a one on the pH as this thing goes. And it's probably gonna level off around here. With distilled water, pure water, it'll go to a pH of zero. Usually it'll go right to, right to red. Uh, with tap water, it's a little basic. So you get a little bit less of a pH shift. So what does that mean for ocean? So we have this going. Uh, the first equation shows us carbon dioxide plus water makes carbonic acid. Well, when the acid forms in the ocean and in this container, it will break down further into a proton, which we know as H plus in chemistry, and the bicarbonate ion, which is found in baking soda, which you might find in your kitchen, sodium bicarbonate. Uh, once that bicarbonate ion gets broken off, it will break up even further into another proton and the carbonate ion. So when you look at this, we have H2CO3. It breaks up the first time and loses one of its hydrogens, one of its protons, and we end up with that and a negative charge. Then that ion breaks up even further to give off the second H that's in carbonic acid. When we get a lot of protons in water, it will disrupt shellfish and their formation and their ability to stay alive. So shellfish, uh, they have shells that are made of calcium carbonate, which is CaCO3. If H plus gets in the water too much H plus, it will break apart the calcium carbonate and we end up with shellfish dying, unable to form full shells, uh, all kinds of things. And it doesn't, it doesn't just affect sea snails like Gary uh, or shrimp that you're eating or lobster. It also affects smaller uh, creatures like plankton who also have calcium carbonate, you know, shells, so to speak on them. So that is the, the danger of too much acid in the ocean water. We end up with a pH drop that can be pretty significant, okay? And you can see that here with this demonstration.